Start of a new module. Uh, last time we uh, looked at the feasibility study and the feasibility analysis for uh, systems to be designed and delivered. And we said that there are three main points we have to look at. One is an operational feasibility, then technical feasibility and economic feasibility. Operational feasibility is that whatever su you suggest, solution you suggest can be operationally implemented. That means, te technology is there and so on. And uh, technical feasibility also means that there is a requirement that is you know you got all the technology available and you can actually have a system which is reasonably well implemented. And economic feasibility essentially says that whatever system you are going to implement is going to pay off. So, there is a benefit in terms of there is a cost benefit analysis is a primary output of the economic feasibility study. So, we need to find the economic feasibility of a proposed solution. This, in the case of a hostile uh, information system, which I discussed in great detail as a case study, we looked at three possible solutions. One solution which was improving the manual system. The second solution was putting a single PC in the office. The third solution was a multiple PCs on a LAN. We rejected the first and last solution mainly because the first solution uh, is not scalable when the number of students increase and it is difficult to operationally implement it. And uh, the last solution namely putting many computers on a LAN is uh, economically not feasible in the sense that it is going to be too expensive a solution even though technically that can be done. Okay. So, we will converged on to solution B namely the uh, putting a single PC and so we have to look at the cost benefit analysis of this solution. That is what we will primarily discuss today at a reasonable length. Okay. Now, the Find to, on it, to find out the economic feasibility, we had to find out uh, the returns, economic returns. That is, how much do you gain by uh, implementing the system, and how does that compare with the cost you are going to pay? And um, this is, of course, done in many other things also in real life you know you you kind of work it out in your own mind the the cost benefit before you buy something even in a shop uh, very often you may not quantify the economic benefit but you would say that there will going to be some kind of a saving uh, by by doing that and you go and take the decision and in the case of the calculation of economic 
benefit, you have to find out all the costs direct and indirect. I will explain with an example what I mean by direct and indirect cost. Direct cost, uh, uh, we will uh, with a case it will be easier for you to understand the difference between direct cost and indirect cost. The direct cost is the cost of computer, software, space, human resource, material, travel, training, etcetera, which we actually uh, talked about yesterday, particularly we talked about the fact that space cost may be very high in a place like uh, Mumbai, uh, whereas space cost is not relevant in our example which we are looking at. And of course, indirect cost is time spent by persons in data gathering and so on. And uh, you, uh, you do not really quantify it very clearly in the sense that in the case of the hostel example for instance, the clerk is anyhow already there and you are not going to pay him extra for this. But in some sense, there is a certain amount of time he is going to spend in doing this. Uh, later on, maybe he will save time. But at, at the time of developing the system, he has to spend some time with the analyst and the programmer and so on and uh, who will require his time to understand the system. And uh, so, the indirect cost is in including the cost of say the warden's time and so on because the fact gathering space stage we found that one has to go through an interview with a lot of people and that is ultimately of course, indirect cost but it is not quantified. Benefits are of both types, tangible or measurable benefit and intangible which is uh, things like better management, better user, user satisfaction and so on. And um, very often the intangible benefit uh, is the only one people can say very clearly, but uh, psychologically you feel more comfortable with this intangible benefit uh, and it is very obvious that there is a certain benefit. To give a very simple example of what is uh, what I mean by intangible benefit is when a railway reservation system is implemented, the intangible benefit is that the time the customer spends in a queue to book a ticket reduces considerably. And so, it is an intangible benefit from the point of view of the railways, but it is a tangible benefit from your point of view because you have not wasted your time and you have uh, saved that time in which you could have done something else. So, so cost benefit in the sense that uh, intangible benefit in terms of user satisfaction is uh, as important as a tangible benefit which may be a, a, a money saving. Now, direct benefits are benefits due to uh, the reduced inventory, early collection of outstanding payments, reduced wastage, faster production and increased production. Let me explain some of these points. Now, the one of the biggest costs in many production companies as well as in our hostel example is inventory cost. What is meant by inventory cost is the uh, items you store, buy and store and which are not used up uh, uh, and so there is a certain amount of dead storage. Dead storage is called dead inventory in the sense that you do not really, you are not essentially using it, but you require it. I give an example of uh, the fact that if in an uncertain system, you have a tendency to fill up lots of buckets of water when you know that the water supply is not very regular. But that storage which you have done is really uh, uh, not required if continuously water flows. So, that storage is a waste of money, I mean waste of money in the sense that for as far as you are concerned, it is a cost of a bucket it may not be that large, but then if you store in a bucket for too long a time, you may have to empty it out and that is a waste, you already paid for the water. So, the point is 
the inventory cost is something where you already paid the money. So, there is an interest payment on the inventory and uh, in production companies there used to be a situation where they have hundreds of crores of uh, material which are uh, in the inventory not regularly used and interest payment on those crores of rupees is so high because you already paid that 100 crores. So, your profitability comes down because of the fact that you have a huge inventory. So, people always try to reduce inventory and as I said in Japan today they try to have so called just in time manufacturing. So, get all the items as and when you require and do not store it unnecessarily. Early collection of outstanding payments, in other words see the interest on outstanding money is normally very large. See one of the main problems faced by our small scale industries in this country is that uh, you do a job. I am when I say small scale industries, I also mean uh, small software companies which are set up by uh, 10 people, 15 people and so on. Now, what happens for them one of the most one of the most difficult things which happen to them is that uh, they do all the work and then they implement the system and they are sup supposed to get payment as soon as the system is accepted and of course, as per the contract they are supposed to get it uh, early, but there is always a delay in payment and delay in payment effectively means that your money is tied up and you have to pay your salaries for your employees and so on and so there is always a problem and so if you can find out some method of uh, collecting outstanding payments very quickly, then you would save that much of interest cost and uh, that is that is an important part. In, in our case the, uh, the early as I said if I am able to pay the vendor quicker, the vendor will reduce your cost. Typically in India what happens is the payments from government departments are notoriously late and so normally all suppliers will jack up the price if it is for a government supply compared to a supply to an individual or a supply to a company mainly because he knows the payment is going to be slow and his money is going to get tied up there is his goods are already supplied. So, this is the kind of problem which is uh, uh, which leads to a requirement for at least producing your bill fast enough as well as you deliver. So, then you get your payments quickly. Reduced wastage, Rest, in, the, in the case of the uh, uh, our hostel management system, if you buy too many vegetables, much more than what is required for the number of students, then they are going to rot. So, you are going to waste those vegetables. So, you are paid and so if you are able to exactly predict the requirement of perishable goods and order only that much of perishable goods, then you can avoid wastage and if you avoid wastage of course, you are saving time money and this is also true not only in the case of hostel, but suppose you are running a medical shop. Medical shop many medicines have an expiry date, beyond their expiry date that medicine has got to be thrown in the rest bin. So, if a medical shop stocks so many too many things which is uh, which is beyond expiry because he did not predict properly how much he will sell in a particular period of time, he may end up unnecessarily losing money which is also true even in the case of retail shops and so on. There are certain items like for instance milk or uh, ice cream or things of that type where there is a, an expiry period beyond which you cannot really keep it in the store. So, these are the issues which you have to in other words reduce wastage by proper prediction of your demand and you store or you buy based on your prediction of demand. This of course, the machines can do reasonably well, computers can be can do that and of course, you can measure that also. In other words, 
before without a computer how much would have been the wastage with the computer by putting that program how much have you saved. So, this this kind of a wastage is another issue. Faster production, faster production means like for instance uh, if uh, your items which are required to produce are available when you need it and uh, you find suddenly in the store that when you need a particular item it is not there then the production is stopped for some for that reason. So, faster production is extremely important in a assembly line kind of a situation or in any any situations. In fact, uh, the um, uh, if you are if, if you are able to prevent any kind of a stopping of a production line that itself will save a lot of money. In fact, I remember one particular example where uh, I worked where this is a problem in terms of the uh, steel plant, where the steel plant was uh, rolling uh, uh, hot steel and making billets and those billets used to be cut to a particular size and uh, the out output billets used to be taken away by a conveyor belt. Now, whenever you cut there is one last piece which is left which is non-standard size because you cannot predict very clearly ahead of time how much what length it will be there and even if, if you even if you cut at a particular rate it might turn out that the last piece is a non-standard size and non-standard size billet may not be usable. So, that company what they found is the last last part which is left that is supposed to fall into a pit and uh, instead of falling into a pit it used to kind of uh, clog up that uh, uh, what I would say the gap in the pit and so the gap was filled up by this because it is longer than the normal wastage last bit and so next time next billet when it is cut the last piece cannot go into the pit and so we had to stop the production line. So, if you stop the production line assume in the case of a hot steel rolling mill if you have to stop that means uh, the startup takes hours together to start because you got to cool down everything and and it is a it is a big mess. So, they are consulting to find out how this kind of production problem can be solved by using a computerized system. In this case we suggested a real time computer system which will actually do a prediction of the length based on metallurgical factors and make sure and control the speed of the of the cutter. So, that the length of those billets are within a certain allowed tolerance plus minus x and the last billet becomes almost 0 or very small. So, that this kind of a production stoppage will not occur and so they found that uh, this uh, saved them considerable amount of time because production line did not have to be stopped and even they produce some billets which is slightly longer than necessary still it, it is not uh, it is not going to reduce their you know reduce their profitability. Profitability is reduced more by production uh, stopping and so on. So, the point is that very many companies they find methods of using computers and so on to be able to keep the production running because it is one of the biggest problems in terms of stoppage of production and also increase production. In this case of if you are doing a proper job the um, uh, of scheduling production then if a proper schedule is made then for the same period of time you will be able to produce more. So, that is a tangible benefit in fact direct saving ok. Indirect saving is in terms of increased work done by the same human resource. Uh, let me take an example of what I mean by uh, indirect uh, let us take an example of a bank computerization. 
when you take a bank computerization, now uh, what has happened in, in banks as, as you know today is there are tellers who are sitting, sitting there or clerks who are sitting there and they have each one of them has a, has a computer. The advantage is that from the point of the customer, the time taken to finish your transaction reduces. Secondly, the same clerk can do many things now. Previously, you had to go to a particular clerk for doing something, some other clerk for doing something else because each one had a different file. But if, uh, if there is a, a, a system which is on online with a co connection to a LAN in the server, then uh, the files are available to all the clerks. So, you can go to any clerk to get a withdrawal. Okay, you do not have to go to a particular teller to get a withdrawal. So, that is, uh, so the indi individual also, the individual clerk can do more work in the same time because by just using a mouse and clicking, the transaction time is considerably reduced, manual transaction time. So, the number of customers who can be catered to in a given time will go up. Okay. So, they do not, the advantage is that they do not have to open new branches because the uh, rush has increased and so on and so forth. Okay. So, in any situation where the, the, in, the, in the case of a bank maybe what would happen is that they can cater to more customers. That means, they have more uh, accounts starting in that because if a, if a bank gets to be known as something where you have to waste a lot of time, people go to some other bank. Okay. So, this is a indirect benefit in terms of getting better work from the same people and also they are able to do more work. Intangible benefits as well, better service to customers, like in the, the case of a value reservation system, bank system, and so on. Superior product quality, see, like the example of a steel mill, I said, the, uh, the billets are off. Once you predict properly, you can have a, a, a correct length which is controlled and uh, which down, down the line that can be effectively used. So, you have uh, superior kind of billets coming out you might say and uh, of course, this is a, an example I know often, say. but then in general uh, if computer based systems, uh, if you are able to uh, uh, imp improve the power, you know they will be able to improve the product quality in terms of the fact that they will be able to control the parameters which affect the quality of the product. Okay. So, that is the point, that is the, the number of parameters which go to make up the product quality. Okay. Uh, and um, so, the, the impro improvement of product quality because of the fact that you have used machines. And, uh, let me take a very simple example again. Uh, if you are looking at the same uh, retail stores, and uh, you, you go and you find items which have a certain expiry. As a customer, you would like to buy an item which is the longest expiry. If it expires in next two days, you may say that it is, uh, you cannot consume it in two days. So, you will not buy it and you will look for something which is say 7 days, 8 days or whatever it is. You look at the date of expiry. Similarly, if you buy a medicine, you also look at the date. So, if you are able to make sure that the product has got a longer expiry period and you do not store products in such a way that there are too many of them which have very short expiry period, then the product quality indirectly is improved as far as the customer is concerned. Um, and, um, you have accurate, reliable, timely and up to date uh, uh, information. Like uh, for instance, uh, a passbook uh, in a bank, you know, when you update a passbook, uh, machine based updation is normally accurate. It is also reasonably reliable, I mean uh, you can immediately find out 
and they can go to the computer and find out uh, if there is an inaccuracy, if there is a data entry error or whatever. And, uh, and it is up to date because uh, you, you know uh, as soon as you withdraw money from your account, it gets reflected in the uh, in your ledger. Ledger is stored in the computer. So, if you go and update your passbook, you find that what whatever you withdraw, that money is also shown in that passbook. Okay. So, you know the up to date current balance. Like you know when you go to an ATM and withdraw money from the ATM, you get a slip which tells you the current balance and the current balance will be based on the with which you, whatever money you withdrew and you got certain balance. Okay. So, it is up to date in that sense. And apart from that, I also talked about the strategic tactical, the advantages. See, so far we have been talking mostly about operational. Okay. Operational is something which you can measure directly. Whereas, tactical and strategic are more difficult to measure in terms of the um, costing or in terms of economic benefit. But it is possible, it is not impossible to measure the economic benefit of a good tactical decision. It is more difficult to measure the economic benefit of a strategic decision. Let me take an example again of uh, what a better tactical decision uh, would do for you. Like uh, many airlines today, as you know there are plenty of airlines, they are all competing and they are all competing uh, for the same customers, set of customers. And when they compete with the same set of customers, they would like to get the maximum number of customers. From the point of view of the airline, the profitability depends upon what they call the load factor. So there is, uh, suppose there are 100 seats in a plane and they are able to fill up 85 to 90 seats, only 10 seats are empty. Then you make a lot of money, but if 100 seats are there and only 20 passengers are going then you are losing money because anyhow your petrol cost is same okay, and uh, your pilot cost is same, everything else is same. So, the higher the load factor, the more is the profitability. So, tactically the decision, tactical decision would be based on the fact that there is certain kind of prediction of uh, based on past experience about the load factor which is expected depending upon the timing of the flight. So, if you find that the load factor goes down for afternoon flights, whether it goes up for morning flights and evening flights, which you can calculate based on statistical parameters, then you can decide to increase the number of morning flights. In fact, that is essentially what has happened now because people like to go in the morning, finish their work and come in the evening. Okay. So, morning and evening flights normally many airlines try to give and of course, they also find again when those uh, when they start giving it that there is competition. So, load factor even if they, if they think the load factor will go up, it may not go up. So, what, what the, the method of kind of tactical decision they can take is that uh, if uh, a person books way ahead of time, I will give him a concession and that is what has happened in India today. Many of the airlines, if you book two months ahead of time for a particular flight, you are given a much lower rate than if you book one week ahead of time. And again, just before the departure of the flight, there are empty seats and you go and book, they will reduce the cost to entice you to go, so that the load factor goes up. So, these are tactical decisions and tactical decisions like this 
in the case of uh, they had to decide how much to charge in your book two months ahead of time, how much to charge when you come in the last minute and things like that. See, So, these are management decisions and they also lead to certain kind of improvement in profitability. Okay. So, these are issues which uh, are tactical decisions. Another interesting tactical decision which some of the airlines took apparently, with in fact, the uh, uh, the pioneer in this was a, a company in UK and uh, what, what this company did was they calculated how much does it cost to give all the meals and so on in the flight. Now, when you go to in a flight, you get uh, free food and you get uh, free uh, juice and stuff like that. So, I didn't be, if the plane is late or something like that, uh, you are also asked given free, free lunch coupons and so on, so you can go and eat in the restaurant. Now, what is the total cost of all this meals? Meals cost, apart from the actual cost of the meal, there is a lot of logistics involved. Bec what I mean by logistics involved is, you suppose a plane has got only 80, 80 passengers in a 100 passenger plane, there is no point in ordering 100 meals, 20 meals are wasted. So, you cannot predict exactly 80 meals ahead of time. So, this company took a decision that they will not give any meals. So, they, they save a lot of money because they do not have to take a tactical decision how much to order and so on and there is no cost involved. The plane is late, they do not have to give coupons and so on. So, they save a lot of money. The tactical decision was that by saving this kind of money, in any case in the plane itself I will give on payment to the customer, suppose he is hungry, he wants to eat, he will have some sandwiches or some, some simple food which will be available on payment. Because that he has, because he is not guaranteeing food, he does not have to uh, uh, predict and store a lot of stuff and so on and he will normally store only things which are not perishable that much. Okay, Like you know, he will have a pack of cashew nuts or things like that, but he will charge for that and uh, some cold drinks and stuff like that. Okay. So, the point is by doing this tactical decision, the company was able to reduce the cost of the ticket by almost about 30 to 40 percent compared to other airlines. And so, this is called a cheap airline. In India, of course, Deccan Airways has done that same study tactical decision they have taken. That is, to so, uh, some extent you might say it is a, a strategy in the sense that I am going to have a cheaper flight and so the point uh, the Deccan Airways managing director tries to make as a strategic decision he says is that I would like to make my plane ticket not much more expensive that, than second class AC ticket on the train. So, I will try to entice the second AC passengers from the train to the airlines and of course, airlines is a lot more comfortable, it is much shorter. Going from Bangalore to Delhi by by train takes you almost 48 hours, whereas in a plane you go in 2 and hours. So, there is if the cost is not much higher, then one would definitely prefer to go by by air. Okay. So, these are the points which are in terms of <coughs> you might say even though I listed them as intangible there is a certain tangible benefit which you can actually compute. Now, let us come back to the our hostel example and looking at the cost benefit analysis of the system. Now, cost benefit analysis is uh, based on I said the total cost which is both direct cost and indirect cost and recurring cost. In this in the case of a solution we looked at, there is a single computer solution. The capital cost is the cost of the computer plus the software which you want to put. There is about 70,000 rupees is what we calculated. Plus 60,000 rupees is the cost of the systems analysis, programming and so on 
which you pay to an external agency to implement the system for you. So, this total cost I am assuming is 1 lakh 30,000. Now, there is besides that there is recurring cost in terms of stationary maintenance, floppy disks, other storage and so on, so on. And I am assuming 2000 rupees a month as a recurring cost. And uh, so, total cost is both capital cost and recurring cost. Recurring means month after month I have to pay, pay that kind of money. Okay. And uh, benefits, I calculate here I have to make certain assumptions. The assumptions which I make is that there is a reduction in inventory of 5 percent. Um, B, because the fact that I am able to predict the number of students who are going to take the meals and based on that prediction, I am able to clearly find out how much is required. So, I hope I conservatively I am saying I reduce it by at least 5 percent. So, if there are 5 percent reduction in the inventory, the daily rate is 45 rupees a day and uh, there is also an assumption. Uh, and there are 400 students in the uh, in the um, hostel and um, 30 days in a, in a month average. Okay, And so, if I take 5 percent of 400 people times 45 rupees and uh, 30 days in a month, the total savings is 27,000 rupees. That is a saving due to inventory inventory reduction. Then there is a transport cost saving. I say that consolidating the requirements, number of times you go to the market to buy in cartridge and so on. I am assuming conservatively 800 rupees per month is saved and savings due to early payment. What I mean by that is that the vendor I am able to pay early today now because I I am creating a bill very quickly and then I am going to pay him right away rather than delaying it in which is there in the manual system. So, if I assume the material cost is 37.5 rupees out of this total 45 rupees daily rate because you know daily rate includes not only material cost, but also the uh, uh, the um, other cost you know uh, people cost and so on. But on my question now why did I use 45 in the uh, uh, inventory and 37 uh, for here see. Uh, the reason is that I am assuming that the actual material cost is is lower than the daily rate. Secondly of course, the, the it is anyhow only a, what I would say guesstimate, I am making a guess and making an estimate. So, it is not the only thing is it has got to be smaller than 45. And uh, I increase it uh, multiplied by 400 students in 30 days and I am assuming that I am saving uh, 1.2 percent in the uh, bills by doing that okay, per month. That means 1.2 percent per, per month savings turns out to be almost uh, uh, 15 percent per year which is not a bad, bad kind of a, uh, interest payment because as you know on your credit card and so on, if you delay payment by a month, how much they, they charge you? They charge you 2 and a half percent per month, Some many of the credit cards and, a, and a, another credit card company may charge 2 percent per month. Nobody will charge you uh, no money at all or things like that. They will charge you, in fact they make most of their money in terms of the uh, interest which you pay by delaying payments. So, this is a kind of, so interest payments are fairly high. So, um, so th there is um, also a saving due to an early, early collection. What I mean by early collection is previously students, some students were not paying in time. And so, if you, if the student does not pay in time, if he pays late, he is being subsidized by the other students. Okay for the total cost. So, by giving a bill early enough 5 days after the end of the month and giving him 
certain number of days to clear, you are essentially getting an early payment from him. <coughs> so, per month I am assuming only about 1 percent saving due to this, that is not out of, out of the 400 students only about 40 students are late and I am, sa I am saving about uh, 10 percent on that to total. So, it is 540 rupees, it is small amount. Anyhow, <coughs> if, I, if I add all of them, that is uh, I add uh, 27,000 plus 800 plus 5400 plus 540, if it is all added, I can do it mentally, I can say 27,000 plus 5000 is 32,400 plus 800 is uh, 33,200 plus 540, 33,740, okay. And I do not have a calculator, you see, so like most of you will do th immediately that, whereas, uh, you know, I am reasonably good at mental arithmetic, you get 33,740. And the uh, indirect benefit, of course, is student satisfaction due to itemized bills and so on, they know exactly extras and and uh, guests and when they brought guests or all that kind of stuff. And uh, it is a predictable daily rate, better menu and all that, that is all intangible. I am not taking that into account in the cost benefit analysis. So, in the cost benefit analysis, I get net direct savings per month is 33,740 per month minus 2,000 rupees recurring expense which I calculated, that is I said that there is a recurring expense in stationary maintenance and things like that. So, that I am reducing from 33,740 and 31,740, 31,740 is the economic benefit or money, money is saved. Um, and uh, there is this money is saved uh, every month, okay. And uh, total capital cost is 1,30,000. So, very, very simple minded cost benefit analysis is there is something called a payback period. That means, uh, what, what I mean by payback period is, I paid certain amount of money up front, I am going to save such certain amount of money. The capital cost divided by the benefit, okay, in this case per month the number of months in which the capital cost will be paid back is called the payback period. So, the cost is 1,30,000, the cost is recurred in 4.1 months if I divide by 31,740, okay. So, that means within about 5 months, 4.1 months in this case, I am able to recover the capital cost. This is a very, very kind of a, beside, after that, whatever savings I make is a net saving, okay. The point of a payback period is that if the payback period is very long, that means the economic benefits are not very, very good. The payback period is very short, that much better, okay. So, the point is that the the shorter the payback period, the better off the, the more economic benefit it is. So, this is a very simple minded calculation, but this is a not a very good calculation because there is also an interest in capital. If I pay 1,30,000 rupees for a, for a machine computer in this case, because in the case of a hostel you may not worry too much about interest rates and so on, but in the con companies interest rates are very, very important in terms of their finding out their profitability. Because I said, I said interest rates are reasonably high in many situations. So, in the case of I am assuming um, 1.5 percent monthly interest on the capital. So, there is a monthly interest payment of 1950. So, your saving is not 31,740 it has to be reduced by the interest payment I have to make on the capital which I already spent. And so, there is if I do that the net benefit is 29,790 and cost recovered that is payback period now is 4.4 uh, months. That means, payback period increases to 4.4 months. Even this accountants will not agree, this is the right method. 
because the uh, money today whatever money is going to accrue to me few months from today is not as, as, as valuable as the money today. What I mean by this is suppose some you know somebody pays you for an item a cash of 10,000 rupees, but they say that I will give you credit and you can pay after 5 months. He will not give you for 10,000 rupees. He will increase the price corresponding to the interest he has to pay. That is one, one aspect. The other aspect is all countries have so called inflation. A money today, the value of the money today is not the same as the value of the money one year from today. In India today, the inflation rate is 4 percent approximately 4, 4 between 4 and 5 percent. That means uh, 100 rupees today is equal to 96 rupees a year from now. That means your value of rupee is going down in that sense. And there was a time when the inflation rate was something like 12 percent, very high. As the inflation rate goes up, the interest rates also go up. So, in advanced countries, the inflation rate is normally try to keep the key, they keep it at about 2.5 to 3 percent. But now, we are reasonably all right. And of course, inflation rate will depend upon uh, how strong your economy is. What is meant by strong or how strong an economy is, is if you are, it is like your home, home problem, you know. If you uh, spend more money than you get, then you are always in debt. And most countries are always in debt. When a country is in debt, then inflation goes up. When the country is does not have too much of a debt, then inflation comes down. Okay. So, this is somewhat, it is a, a economic theory you might say, but the point is that apart from interest, there is also inflation one has to be concerned about. So, there is a present value method. The present value method, the general idea is that the present value of the rupee is, my, is uh, higher than the, the value of that same rupee a year from now. Okay. Uh, the, as a point out of 100 rupees today is better than 100 rupees one year from now. Okay. So, that is essentially the idea in this uh, present value method. So, I am using R, R interest rate, R percent interest rate, N is the number of months and X is the benefit. The present value of benefit which accrues n months from later. See 31,700 rupees, 35,000 what the exact amount I uh, remember let us see was, was 35,700 let us look at look at that uh, 31,740. 31,740 was the uh, uh, saving every month, but that saving is every month. So, saving 5 months from now of 37, 31,740 is not equal to the money value today. So, you have to reduce it. The saving is x rupees, you have to reduce it by 1 plus r to the power n is a interest calculation, it is compound interest as usual. Okay. And uh, larger the value of r, the lesser is the present value. Okay. And uh, r normally if it is a long periods of time, not months, but years, one has to kind of look at uh, inflation also, inflation index. Add to the interest rate, the inflation index. To some extent you might say interest rates and inflation are somewhat related. Okay. And um, the Reserve Bank of India also declares so called interbank rates and stuff like that. I mean, but as far as we are concerned, I am assuming that R is something which is consolidated. If I talk, if you talk to an economist, he might say this is too simple minded okay, or a, an accountant, but it is reasonable for our purposes. Okay. Better than just dividing the benefit by the uh, savings, which you did the, the very first first one. Okay. So, if I do that, then 1 lakh 30,000 is the total cost. The benefit will start accruing only 
from the next month. This month there is no nothing, no benefit. So, 31,740 31, next month is equal to 31,271 rupees today. Okay. That means 1 over x uh, 31,740 divided by 1 plus whatever is the you know, interest rate to be multiplied by the power in this case n is 1. Okay. So, you effectively calculate step by step and of course, this calculation can be done on a spreadsheet or uh, quick look at a quick table of, of carbon interest and you can calculate it, but spreadsheets are very, very simple to use. And so, you find out the benefit benefits and you go on accumulating the uh, that is you see that the uh, the first month benefit the, the benefit of saving of 31,740 the present value is 31,271. Because one lakh thirty thousand is the present uh, money already spent, so the next month I get little lesser amount, and if I add it, this is a cumulative benefit, and again third month it reduces further, and the cumulative benefit is this much, and so you go on accumulating the benefit, present value of the benefit, and you find that at the end of five months you are having you are exceeding the 1 lakh 30,000 the, the current value. That means, somewhere between 4 months and 5 months you recover the cost on the present value method also. Okay. The present value method is the one which is used by accountants and so on, but by and large in this case it turns out that the present value method will give you something a little larger than uh, uh, maybe 4.4 but it will be lesser than 5 months. In any case, a very reasonable payback period within 6 months, within this case, within 5 months you require your cost. Okay. So, this is a, a, a cost benefit in terms of economic benefit is quite good and so you are you should be able to convince the management. So, at the end of all this you have to prepare a feasibility report which you are give to the management and um, feasibility report is uh, something very important because that is one which is going to convince the management to implement the system which you are going to give. Okay. And you have to spend a little time in uh, carefully uh, writing it. If there is in all, all reports you have something called an executive summary, which is a something like an abstract or a one page pressy of what you are going to say, because top managers do not have too much time. And if you give a report of 150 pages, they will not even read it, because 150 pages first of all it puts me off. I read 150 pages and digest that 150 pages, it is going to take me time and uh, they will not even look at it. So, most companies you have two parts, one is an executive summary of maximum one page or two pages, maximum one page in fact. A good executive summary is a pressy of what you are going to say in one page, which is persuasive enough to persuade the management that you have you have a reasonably feasible system. For well of course, you, you have a feasible system. The executive summary also may be negative saying that system is not feasible for the following reasons. So, you may not look at uh, implementing this. Okay. So, what I mean to say is that feasibility need not necessarily be always positive, it can be both negative and positive. But the point is that it should be short, should not be very, the executive summary should be short. What the proposed system will achieve in a, in the case of our hostel system is that the proposed system will achieve, will give you uh, uh, better inventory control, uh, itemized bills to students, reduce the cost and reduce long outstanding payments. And so, four or five lines you say exactly what, what uh, the proposed system will achieve. 
who will be involved in operating system. You can say the, the system will be operated with the existing staff, you do not have to recruit new staff, only the hostel clerk has got to be uh, trained in using computer for data entry and so on. So, who will be operating system? Organization changes to implement system. Uh, the, what changes you have to bring into the organization? So, in, the, in this case, it is very simple, it is not really any major organizational change, except that you are making your procedures much more systematic, okay. And uh, some that there is in other cases there may be a requirement for changing the way in which the organization works. Um, so, there is <coughs> there is something which um, and a feasibility report, list of list the benefits of the system, uh, as I said both tangible and intangible, cost of the system, that is in the aggregate summary you give the benefits, the cost and the cost benefit analysis. After giving this, the cost benefit analysis as I said will give both tangible and intangible benefits and of course, you can quantify it nicely. So, within one page, in fact, whatever hostel information system I talked about, you can definitely write it up in one page as an executive summary. Then you give details. Details are intended for actual later on implementing and so on. So, these will be looked at by other people as maybe the people in the computer section or, or people who are going to be actually in the case of a hostel system, they looked at by uh, the students, maybe the uh, clerks and the wardens and so on, okay. So, it can be more detailed, giving details of introduction with the outline of the proposal, data flow diagram of existing system, how does the data flow and documents flow in the existing system, modified data flow diagrams. In fact, I am going to talk about data flow diagrams in much greater length in the next lecture. Discuss alternative solutions. Uh, what are all the, in the case, for instance, I gave A, B, C in the case of a hostile information system. Uh, so, discuss all the alternatives and say why you picked a particular alternative. List, list new equipment to be installed. In this case, I say I had to install a computer, okay. And, uh, technical operational feasibility analysis and then economic feasibility cost benefit analysis in greater length like the present value method all that can be used. Whereas, in executive summary you only say that the payback period is less than 5 months, okay. that is sufficient there. New procedures, human resources, training needed, anticipated problems because no system again gets implemented without any problem. So, but, so I anticipate, okay, will there be a human resistance or uh, is there going to be a delay? Implementation plan and so this kind of completes your uh, report, executive summary with the great, greater amount of detail about the feasibility report. The most important thing you should remember is that one of the most ignored parts in any system is to give a good report and a fair amount of time has to be spent in writing a good report and uh, many people do not realize that and sloppy reports are written. So, apart from oral communication skills, it is very important for you to also have good written communication skills, to write it very precisely, nicely and so on. So, the other people can understand what you have written. So, I think it is a, a good, good report writing is as important as good programming as far as implementing systems are concerned. So, uh, this kind of concludes this particular module and I look at the data flow diagrams in the next, next modules in greater detail. Thank you very much.